Then we have now some access. So I assume someone has Vietnamese. Indeed, Tato is playing Vietnamese himself. And we have Land playing Hunts. And you can see scouts. Are they already moving out for some laming? Looks a bit like it. On the other side, FedEx is playing Indians. And Monosh is playing Ethiopian. Strong civilizations all around. Will you be casting in German tomorrow? Yes. German Monday. So that will be unfortunate for you, but will be a long day. I might even Germany be against Poland. No, I think I won't do it. I think we will train before that one. I feel like Mangadoy is still the best unit in the game if you can upgrade on time. Um, laughs in Elite Elephant. But yeah, I know what you want to say. They are still really, really strong. Yeah. Arena brings a lot more strategies on the table in late game. Really interesting. <sighs> I probably have to agree with that. Although I don't want to. I think the thing is with Arena, we see so many different army compositions or army uh, civilization matchups that you can see so diverse army compositions that we then see different strategies. Hmm. As I said, it's it's way over my head how arena team games are working. Maybe if there were mass arena tournaments, the meta would have been figured out and you just know, okay, this is the way to play. Will you switch to German in 30 minutes if you're still casting? No. I guess we can still understand the game. Yeah, yeah, in some form. Team game is also less Vululu. Well, especially if Teutons are around, but yeah, yeah. What is what is games are tomorrow to cast? Still World Cup? Still World Cup. I don't even know. Let me quickly check Reno. So tomorrow we will have day three of the World Cup. It will start with China B against UK. Should be a clap Reno. Canada A against Canada B. Should be a clap Reno. Argentina A against Chile B should be a Clapperino, but interesting because my group and the winner will play against us. And Brazil A against Turkey A should be a Clapperino as well. So I think it will be more of a dream stream. And yeah, let dreams be memes. Which arena team game would you find most interesting? 2v2, 3 3 or 4v4? I think 4v4 is too confusing, so I I will probably go with 3v3. Not very interesting. Yeah. Tomorrow all three zeros? Mm, not unlikely. Not unlikely, yes. Just remember, next weekend is going to be a great one. A great one, right? We will have the winner, winner matches. So we will have... Yeah, lots of good ones for sure. And the decider who is getting the better seat for the bracket then. Is there something like a pocket in Arena 3-3? Absolutely, yeah. Was Chile versus France a Clapperino? It was a Clapperino. To my surprise, though. Like pocket goes calf and flanks go arch. Yeah, not like that. But like if you play fixed position, you probably want to have the castle drop civilization as the flank. And probably the more mobile civilization in the pocket. So Khmer pocket, Maya, Spanish, Burmese, Aztecs as the flanks. Well, long distance, right? If you're a noob and play with friends just for fun, it's so simple and you have fun. But in the latter, you remember how difficult it is against other players and how many strategies there is. Still shouldn't prevent you from having fun, my man. It actually was a very highly upvoted comment on Reddit the other day. I enjoyed the game more after I took it less seriously and dropped 200 rating points. Like the player was like 1100 and tried to try out every game and kind of lost the main goal of the game, which is having fun, right? And then he accepted, okay, I will just play random strategies, meme around a bit, drop down to 900, but enjoyed the game so much more again. That's a solid wall. 
Tedo wants to really make sure that no one is sneaking there. That would be like the late Oninger attack here going through that one and suddenly it's walled already. That looks like a win for Tedo. In your dreams, guys. Felix even having 6 HP more. Okay. So could have survived 2 more hits. Ah, Tedo was Dark Age. Okay, okay, okay. That makes one more sense then. Thinking ahead. So Pocket Boom and Flank go Boom or Castle Drop or something. It is very complex on what the civilization is, right? And as I said, there is no defined meta at the moment. Monos, don't tell me this is an open fast, or like a fast castle. Looks a bit like it. Resources here. Sits at 300 food. We'll have way too much gold. Ow. Double lumber camp. He will be fine. That's a... Without a barracks, that's now getting dropped. Okay. The Tedo does not scout that the wood line reached the edge. Yes, indeed. That's what happened. Man at arms now out. Going over there to the side. There's something like an assist exists in AU. Somebody to help to keep an eye on things and hints to play during the game. Is it allowed? You mean something like a coach? Mm, that is not common. And at the moment, Age of Empires doesn't really allow a spectating function where you can only spectate one of the teams, right? So that wouldn't really work. Quick Wall's not really happening. Three Men at Arms doing just so much damage again. FedEx a bit late. And didn't really scout that one happening. Tedo. Pretty sweet job. Land around with two scouts already. Goes for some more production. Not really sure where that third scout went. And Archer Range being dropped. Blacksmith being dropped should be a solid fast castle for sure. Men at Arms continuing to keep this one open. And from Monos fast ca uh, from Monos Fiddle Edge timing. Lan and Tedo know. Okay, this guy is playing fast castle. If we keep this open, we can continue doing the damage. Now two archers are coming over. Tedo didn't want to allow the rewall. Both players completely walled. This might be the spot where stonewalling actually might make sense, but actually what? Look at Nilly predicting stuff. Okay. I like that. I like that. And... Did he? Ah, he didn't scout the board line. Yeah. But one of the players might have somebody behind them in real life. That person might give support. Yeah, that actually happened in Age of Empires. Oh, oh, that is open. Oh, no. And scouts blocking the blo spot there. Palisade wall isn't going up. Four scouts out. Three men at arms. Oh, no. This could be another short series. Two villagers here. Can they quick wall? No, they cannot. Now one spearman is coming over. Two archers as well trying to block the wall again. One villager going down. Second villager at the left-hand side. Third one is getting mic shot down here. Oh, God. This is looking so ugly. Men at arms are falling. Scouts are falling as well. Two archers still annoying. Might find another kill over there. Not really sure. Not sure why they're focusing down the scout. I think finding another villager kill might be an option. Two men at arms still alive. Oh, God. This is so ugly for FedEx. But get out of there with more than what I feared at some point. Only one villager lost? No. He only lost one villager and all that. That is actually okay. That is actually quite reasonable. Yeah, he had to pull everything from wood. Berries are idle as well. But now Monos just needs to do the damage. And Monos kind of has to go for Tato instantly. Would make more sense. Well, if he sees that land is stonewalled. Why do you think it makes sense then cause the fast castle? Yeah, indeed. Like, at the moment they know they're doing damage to FedEx. And they know they can take the damage from Monos. But their economy should be better. So basically, buying time is the most important thing now. And Stonewall simply buy more time for you than Palisade Walls. And land doesn't have houses. So that's why I thought Stonewalls could make a lot of sense. Alex adding some more scouts, intercepting some of the archers. Good job there. Now rushes out the blacksmith. Land should not be open anywhere. No. And Tello, he's sitting fully behind house walls, reinforces those walls. Maybe house there. And look at that. Yeah, Tello is totally fine. We'll have a reasonable castle edge timing behind this one, I believe, as well. 
Only one archer range though, but those crossbows won't find anything. Castle Age timing should be pretty bad for FedEx, only now transitioning on to gold, and as you can see, very little resources for him. Lan can click up any second, indeed does now. Teddo can click up pretty soon as well. One man at arm, one spearman, three archers will get cleared up pretty soon, but won't be pretty here. Yeah, Tedo still has to reinforce those walls. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm, does he see that by now? No, he still doesn't. Okay, so maybe house behind here might actually come in at one point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Market now by Tedo. Runs away from that. Scared the crossbows are coming around. 750 HP on those houses. In the in feudal age. Stone get now, second stable. I liked how Lan approached this one, honestly. I really do. Also, you might feel like, oh, mining camps? I was told you always build them one tile away. But actually, if you only have one villager working on it, directly touching makes lots of sense as well. Tattle, stone stonewalling there, and they just know, okay, we did so much damage to FedEx early on. We just need to hold. So Tattle with some preemptive stone walls. Would love to see a second archer range. Where's his army moving out? Oh, Sneakerino. Didn't expect that, honestly. Didn't expect that. Thought he would like do two archer ranges and try to defend at home. That is kind of a risky move trying to go for the counterattack, I have to say. Lots of crossbows are coming over, but look at that. They have no idea that the stone wall is behind it. Now only they see. And is that really the angle that you want to attack into then? If you know that your opponent is stonewalled? Probably not. Goes for archery range number three even. Why nobody hunts? Because villagers are way too exposed. Knights in the stables at home. And yeah. Probably the barracks might have been the best angle to attack. Easier said than done. How, how would they know? Look at that, army value 2k to 1k. And they simply don't find the openings. And Lan, he will be stuck at 2TCs for quite some time, I believe. We have some boom here for Monash. And actually, the game is more even than I thought. Tedo should get onto a lot of crossbows. And there won't be lots of knights by FedEx. But he can up. Him only losing one villager there was actually pretty good. I was really, really surprised. Oh, yes, two in total. Land lost one villager. Solid job. Monash didn't kill a single unit all game. Land killed like two scouts or something. And FedEx, actually, the guy that killed most, obviously, did clear up what Tato did throw at him. Tato now going for the attack at the front. Where are the crossbows? He did go back? Fully went back with all his army. Is, th is he for real? That's 24. That's one. Yeah, it's for all his army and FedEx is super exposed. I'm not sure if I like this. Ooh. Not sure if I like this at all. Ballistics now coming in. Tero very aggressive. And how do you ever get gold control? Where's your second gold spot? Some in the back there. Drops the TC. Makes hell of a lot of sense. But that will be some farms idle. Two stables at the front. Can't do too much. And Tero. Mm, that could be some kills. Defense upgrade now for FedEx. And they are just going for the stable. Crossbows are coming over. 25 against Tedos 14. So should be pretty convincing. Night numbers, though, pretty convincing for our Han player. Only three camels out on the map now, dropping two TCs. That means not a lot of production. Not a lot of production for sure. Can't really afford that. Ballistic only now coming in for Monosh. And he has one crossbow in no man's land. Tedo will drop TC number two and three. First stable down. And then it's basically crossbow against crossbow numbers. Camel so weak. And I think, honestly, this is the spot where you just go mass, mass knights. If you're hunts. Maybe stay 2TC. Go 5 stable. And just out mass. Because your opponent will always have way too few camels in this spot. They will over boom now. And you can go really, really ham. What is the meaning of the two coins? One with a heart and one with a skull next to the little death number. 
Value spent destroyed. And values no value spent. What? Okay. So it's value spent. What did you build in this game? And well, how much did you kill? Value destroyed. What is it? Uh, okay. Rogan? It's interesting to watch without CAs after the years. What? I don't know what you, you mean. But that is very difficult to know for land. No. Well, they killed the stable. They pushed away the main gold. So I think they could have a good idea that La FedEx can't have mass camels. Alcoholics and Anonymous, thank you, my man. Stable behind now and hunt stable bonus. You can get huge advantage. That's what I'm saying. Crossman numbers 43, Tether only 25. Monash can still win this one quite nicely. All the knights full HP though. Land, does he want to take this engagement? Ooh, 43. Army values pretty close. Spain A with a slight advantage. Rogan? Oh, hey yo, hey yo. And now they're going back again to FedEx. Oh, this could be so good. Now they know that the camels were spotted over here and they can just go for a rampage. Maybe even Tato going home, Lan going full, Raid might have been an option. But they will just try to intercept some reinforcements. And they will at least do some damage. And... Oh, she was actually saved by the camel there. Of getting a stroke. Stable added now, TC number 3 and 4 though. So it will be long car sets play, but with a strong economy behind this one. For sure. What do you think about FedEx gameplay, bro? Mm, nice save, surely. Needed to wall a bit earlier. Didn't really scout the men at arms. Nice saves. Ni nice saves, I would say. Game number two and one I obviously heavily analyzed already. Oh, the knights are so stuck. Look at that. They can't do anything. That's such a wasted army for land. This is so bad. This is so incredibly bad for land. He is not fighting at all. Those, those crossmen died. That was horrible. Horrible engagement for land and Tato. Holy guacamole, now needs to run and Monarch is just killing everything there. God was that bad. Argentina at the moment leading with over 60 population, over 50 military lead. Tero got completely cleared up there. If he doesn't have a defensive castle ASAP, he is toast. Oh god, that was... I can't remember seeing such a bad engagement on such a high level for quite some time. Especially without uh, Mangalots included. That didn't happen, guys. Oi, 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 oi. Knights bugged out on the gold. They didn't bug out. They were simply trapped. They were army the left hand side. Tether was, uh, Tether was sitting at the left hand side. And army was at the right hand side. There was no bugging. Clip, please. You can do that. Ooh. Okay, Tato can click up to him pretty soon though. But Monosh is clicking up any second. Indeed, he is now. Defensive castle by Tato is getting rushed out. How can he hold this one? Knights are coming over and he is mopping that army quite likely. Oh, goddy. This looks so incredibly good for Argentina. On the way to Imtado is on the way to Imp as well though. How much can the counter attack do? Okay, this will be a massive amount of dead villagers for Monosh who is sitting at 89 before that raid. 54 army, 3 TCs. That will be lots of losses. Can he quick wall everything in time? Very unlikely. More stuff here at the front. Oof. Would you prefer Ethiopians or Vietnamese exports in general? Probably Ethiopians in 2v2. In 2v2, the crossbow player is rarely getting attacked. So I think damage output is more important than HP. Better than Archers to swing the game in the end. Well, he has one castle, right? So it's tricky to get into math, Breton Archers. Camel's now coming over for the defense. And Monash, he just lost, I think, what was it? Over 20 villagers, surely, right? He was at 87 when we looked. 35 idols behind this one as well. So that raid did massive amount of damage. Did it enough to put them back into the game? Well, difference is now only 
10 population here, so it clearly did massive amount, and the knights are still around, finding more and more kills. Now regrouping here to the top, and all of a sudden, Spain only four population behind. What are we witnessing? But that army is simply unstoppable here for quite some time. Terra now moving out, goes for TC number four, sends his army over, but that one will be quite weak. Monos can dictate the game here, he needs to apply the pressure. He needs to do damage, but look at that. 56 villagers now. He lost 40 villagers or something that rate. Let's quickly take a look at that. He lost 33 villagers. No, he lost... 38 villagers, yeah. 38 villagers lost there in that raid by Monos. Oy, 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 oy. <sighs> Four TCs for... FedEx 3 for Monos, 4 for Lan, Tata will have 4 pretty soon as well. You don't need a stronger Nico to do Arbalest production though. That is right, especially if you have lots of Arbalest left over. You mainly need... Uh, yeah, to keep those numbers alive. How are they clearing this one up? Will be tricky. Tara goes for the first defense upgrade now. Hmm. I'd love to see him get Bracer and such. Only two attacks for now. Is his economy really that bad? Knight's finding more kills here. Land so active. How many villagers is he killing now? He overall got 59 villager kills in this game. Make it 60. So he's just raiding heavily. Obviously, he will have massive amount of losses himself now. Tello is coming over and we will see a really wild game here. Fletching now for FedEx, trying to get some more damage output from his TCs. And, well, Camels will be fine. Tello, I think he engaged a bit too early. He is getting cleared up completely. Population was even before this one, but Tello, he will run out of options. Ay, 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 ay. Overall score, well, Monos slightly ahead there over Tello. FedEx and Lan both suffered quite a bit. But that army, is it unstoppable now? Look at that, army value 9.4k to 2.5k. What one misstep can do in Age of Empires is just crazy. Lan, they're building up army for so, so long. Imperial Skirmisher being checked now even. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Camel's so good at killing TCs behind this one. And Tato, yeah, Red and Archers might be good against... Camel, Arbalest, but honestly, they won't get onto the numbers. Elite skirmishers have to be mixed in as well. The full migration at the top, as you can see, the green line. And you can see all this cleared up over and over again. What a good game by Monos and FedEx here, for sure. That is, like, well, why you can never say a series is guaranteed to end 3-0, right? Especially with those two so close. and Or not so close, but relatively close. Monash and FedEx, both clearly top 100 players in the world. And they can surely perform here. Another TC dies though. And one misstep. And a game is gone for you. After that, I think they try to still make the best happen for themselves. But now 87 Arbalest on the field against the combined 36 army of Spain A. Never seen such a big throw for a long time. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. <laughs> uh, especially like on such a high level. That's something I haven't seen in so long. To get Im Camel, it's officially over. Well, he's still in Castle Age, so uh, I don't really expect Im Camel to be the decide decider here. But Tedo's building a good army against what Monash has. It was, oh, that was the MTC. Oh, goddy. Len just didn't reach Imp. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Market is now taken down as well. Lan must be dead. Well, surprisingly enough, Lan actually sits at 40 CS with 67 villagers. So he actually did a good job of saving lots and lots of them. Imskirm chasing down against all those Arbalest. Camels are squeezing through though, and that will be another dead two TCs then. <sighs> Camels 
Camel is so good at killing this. Land doing well to not be defeated here. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Red turns around. Can't get elite red turns though. Builds another castle. Trade will be pretty much out of the question for quite some time. Len runs again. Can he stonewall behind this one? I think he should be aware of it. Indeed, he does. Good job there. Coinage now by Tato. Wants to have his team partner back into the game. He's sitting at pop 170, but well, Len at 68 and will lose more and more villagers. Tato, and that is not the craziest trap ever, right? It is good against the Arbalest, but he won't do well against the Camel Raiders. Riders that are still far in the back. Retan Archers now arriving, and it is elite Retan Archers, so that actually is, won't be the worst fight for Tedo ever. Especially like cost efficiency should be on his side. Retan's behind, Imskirm's probably focusing down the Arbalest, but Retan's, I think there's only so much he can do. Maybe focus down that Stonewall a bit more, 400 HP on that one. And now all the Camels died before they can upgrade. And Tedo, that should be a really good fight for him, honestly. Only one defense upgrade. Rattans full upgrades. They are doing... Abelas are doing one damage here. Rattans are just shrekking this one. Uh-oh. Don't give me hope, guys. Don't give me hope. How many camels do we have on the field? 24. Overall population, 280 against 230. Monash won't do anything in this game. Against Rattans. It's the camels alone. That dictate this one. Tado now with the push through the center. Honestly, if like Tado gets onto Halberdiers or can sling land onto Halberdiers. I I I don't want to say it, but I think they might have a shot. Whew. Second throw in the same game. I am kind of expert in the game, much experienced than you. Okay, thank you. Always love to have experienced players around. Camel's now coming over. Arbalest. Do we even continue to go for Arbalest? Or do we maybe just go full sling? Tedo, we've been researching paper money here. <laughs> uh. I'm just gonna do Siege to Wreck Archer uh, Rattans. Yeah, he could. But just sling to Im Camel should be fine as well, no? Im Camel's now being researched. Tedo's microing back. He needs to get some Harbardiers out on, on the field, I would say. To get a fighting army there again. 64 villagers for Lan. What can he go for? Certainly needs to put himself back on the map. And yeah, look at that. Lots of farms that he can still lose. Use. Look at that. That's 40 farms that he can kind of use. Even more. He doesn't need to seed them. So wood is not really what he is concerned about now. What about Skirms and SO for Red? Well, uh, Skirms are really bad in team games in general. And against Vietnamese. But SO obviously would be a great unit, yeah. But they still don't have any trade, right? And Tedo is still preventing them from ever getting trade. Land is setting themselves up. Guys, this could be the game of the tournament. The score lead now for Spain. Are you kidding me? Population difference is only at 15. No way. No way, right? Extra gold here in the back. Look at that. Lan is doing such a good job. He has two army and two of his knights are patrolling next to golds. And they damn need gold to get to imp camels. 21 imp camels here. Not the scariest thing ever. Light have now added. It's now 2v1. Well, Tedo might even be slinging some, right? Imp camels now surrounding this one. Tedo might lose some of his army. Rattan Archers, they will get mobbed up eventually. Camels, they get some solid armor. They get some solid damage output. Not too bad, Tado. Three castles producing. Now got castle number four up. Gets lots of control. They still have the walls. And their trade will simply be earlier. Their trade will be better. They still have access to quite some gold as well. Maybe some raids here at the center. And look at that, Tado. They realize that's just raid all the gold. And we are kind of fine. Him camels now running in, but you don't want to raid. You need to set up trade, my man. 300 population against 350. Tedo even builds a fifth castle there. Trying to pressure that gold. They know what's up. We have now 11 light calf on the field. 
Lan adding more stables. Oh god, Tato going mass rattans. That castle will be a very special one, guys. And won't go up here for sure. Rattans need to micro back. Even the zebra had to die. Tato goes for more production. Where is he getting all that gold from? I don't really see it at the moment. Score lead completely changing. Look at that. It's even at the moment. Dup, 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 dup. Hussars. Now only lacking one last attack upgrade. Soon we will have fully upgraded Hussars. A Han player with 108 villagers. He can get some stuff on the map. He can raid. He can be annoying. And indeed, that's what he's starting now. Tato just keeps contesting this one in the center. Still only one defense upgrade for Monash. That really makes me angry as well. What a great game. The best game of the tournament thus far. Another raid. Knight coming over for some raid. Low HP villagers there as well. Tato, he's just running around. He might just try to block this area off. Hasa's finding so many raids. And I will give you another update on how many villager kills we had. And it is... Lan with over 100 villager kills now. Killed more than he lost and he, his base got completely erased. Tato, mass retin archers. Was that the unit that was the answer to the army? Did we maybe need to see a sling from Monash onto FedEx to go for mass imp camels? Tricky to say. Lan, far behind when it comes to killed value here. Now runs in, wants to just kill the trap. And then he can regroup again. Imperial skirmishers mixed in there. Such a good unit. Mangonel instantly getting sniped down. Tato so active. Where are the Hassan numbers? How many stables do we have? I can see seven for land. Now up. Can go for Hassan production only at 17. For now, 65 skirmishes, 28 arbalest for Monash. He has a strong army, but it is simply so much weaker than Vietnamese. And so many imp camels being thrown in there. Where's the gold? They're going massively on gold, but still not setting up the trade for the long game. Tado. The castle, the stone walls, they know exactly what's up. They know exactly. We just need to prevent them from getting onto trade. And then we're looking so good in this one. Knowing about the gold there in the back. Just need to get some raids in. Maybe that's the plan here for Lan. Could be lots of villager kills. Full Rubenstock, yeah. And full Tato. Just realizing so well the situation. 15 population leads. Now for Spain here. And they have the better army all of a sudden. 1k behind an army value. But it just seems like Vietnamese are so much stronger. Hasas are moving in again. Probably focusing down the trap. Then moving on to the skirmishes. Might be the way to play this one. Behind this Imp Camels now taking over. Maybe the Rattan Archers moving back a bit. We now see Sultan. So 10 more gold generated for your income there. But... What gold income do you really have, my man? I don't really see it happening for you. Hasa's finding so many kills in the back. Finally a market. But where to? Where do they want to trade to? This direction? That's not really a thing, guys. And that army is retreating as well. No idea why they're so slow. And Tato just keeps on killing here. Oh, 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 oh. That was villagers in there. So the patrol didn't work. Tato, another throw in this game. Throw number three. A lot of army completely wasted here. He clicked them forward, but a villager was in there. So patrol doesn't work. Attack move doesn't work. Whatever he tried to click and just threw 30, 40 army away. All of a sudden, he's sitting at quote-unquote only 50. But he was way higher than that. Surely had to be pop limit. Hasa ah, so raid now coming over. And I'm going completely bananas over this game. This is so crazy good. So many strategies played around. Tato. And Lan, 320 population, 305 for Argentina at the moment. Imperial Camels are now pushing in, another trap being produced. Hasas around can still do something. There's still no trade running, but there's no, not a lot of trade in general here. Let's take a look. Send resources, we had FedEx slinging quite a bit. No, Tato slinging quite a bit towards Lan. Some resources from Monos towards FedEx and trade. 19 trade cards for Tato, 12 for Lan on the field, 0-0 zero, zero on the other side. Tato's castle placement is amazing. Look at that. They are very heavily walled. Paladin even here for Lan. And now the three castles, the four castles, some stone walls in between. Raids are still coming over those walls. In the end, not helping out enough. 
to our surprise. The thing is though, where are the Im camels? They are still 23 on the field. Okay, that's not too bad. Paladin count now at 8. I question the Paladin choice, I have to say. I think going Hazar plus Rattans might have been the better choice. Tato fully, fully creating the arena here. Quite funny. That gold is running out pretty soon. That gold, well, still quite some reasonable numbers. And now land is coming over. Army value over 10k versus over 9,000 of FedEx Amonos. Who is taking the better fight though? That's an army that the Argentine surely didn't expect here. Arvelis in the back. Skirmishes at the front. The game is even lagging. That doesn't have to be me. The trap is still shooting away happily. Skirmishes are dying. Im camel numbers at 18 now and dropping more 23 actually over there 15 paladins on the field 45 imperial skirmishes you can see the numbers yourself massive engagement i think no one is really winning this one abel is still surviving in the back rattans are surviving in the back as well though trap is falling more paladins being produced you can see trade still 0, 0 31 and 19 therefore they can get on to better numbers they can continue building strong army and now we see a switch into infantry from Monash. is he the one going for harbardiers now seems a bit like it still no real trade is coming over here him camels mixed in hasas mixed in and now we suddenly see the dance all of a sudden in this game and obviously idle times are going completely bananas now in this one kill land still heavily behind taro just putting massive amount of killed resources there on the field. FedEx and Monos pretty close together. Using the market more and more there, surely. And we can see now pushing in. It is Tato and Land, both basically pop limit. We are close there. Pop one th uh, 330 for FedEx and Monos. And I fear that the best game of this tournament might already have happened. You might have already witnessed that one. Lan with a huge throw at some point. Tato with the incredible clear up at the right hand side. Then all the full control. Did he maybe have the f perfect civilization to address mass Arbales and mass camels there? It felt like it. Imperial skirmish are red and just so good. The Arbales didn't do anything anymore. Monos maybe should have transitioned away from them. But obviously we saw everything. We saw what Tedder was going for. We saw what happened. And we now see the full Hazar Paladin production from Mr. Lan. The Rattans are pushing in. Tedder with more siege. Maybe even going for some ramps. Would love to see them from Lan. But does it really matter at that point? Even fighting for that stone here could maybe guarantee one, two more castles. Bombard Cannon now being added. They are... Flying in and with the Bombard Cannons, the GG's as well. Good luck next round. Monash and Fenix giving this one up. Spain takes it 3-0 in. Hell of a game. Whew. Whew. You can already start thinking about the clickbait title. What are we going to put here? The biggest throw versus the biggest rethrow. The best game of the year. I can't believe what just happened. I have no idea. This game has four throws and the biggest the biggest ping pong who is leading, who is winning, I've seen in a very long time, if not ever. Comeback of the century? Maybe. Maybe even of the millennium. Phew. Crazy game. Crazy game. Let's look through the stats. Some sling back and forth. Tedo only 3.5k and then landed all on his own. In the end, idle times obviously massive. All makes sense, right? So many raids going on. You have endless amount of villagers and 55 kill killed resources there. 26 for Lan. And he could simply use all those farmers again, right? And then the reboom is so much easier. I even went for how many farms did he have in the end? 44. And those were so yet over 100 farms, not over 100 farmers. Mm, yeah, let's say 90. And we will take a look at the stats again after this one. That one was a crazy, crazy game. Tedos KD just rocking the game. Monos couldn't really do too much more with all the Arbalest. What a crazy game by Tedo.
not much more to say. Buildings raised there 22.5 and Teddo with a solid, solid trade profit together with land. Not crazy, but well, they simply didn't have control for so, so long. And therefore, it was really good. Poof. Goodbye, hippo lovers.